Now, from the makers of Coldwater Omo, the conference room of the Capital Land and Development Company is large, imposing, and dominated by a large oak desk and seven chairs. At the moment of starting this story, it is empty. Miss Charles, an attractive, icily efficient young woman, is placing pads and pencils around the desk. Having done so, she glances at her watch and moves to the door. Before she gets there, it opens. Sir Jeremy Broadfoot enters. Ah, everything is set for tomorrow morning's board meeting, Sir Jeremy. Good. Uh, thank you, Miss Charles. If there's nothing else, I'd like to get away early. Certainly. Thank you. Important date tonight, Miss Charles? I just wish to leave early. Good night, Sir Jeremy. Miss Charles left the room and the building with cold dignity. Sir Jeremy permitted himself a smile as he watched her climbing into her car. What he didn't see was another car parked across the road. It had two men in it. They watched Miss Charles drive off. They saw Sir Jeremy draw the curtains of the conference room. They looked at each other, removed a suitcase from the back seat, and one of them said, Overture and beginners, old man. Five minutes to go and curtain up. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Once an OMO user, always an OMO user, because it gets out the worst dirt and stains. Mrs. Francis of Port Elizabeth found that OMO cleaned her husband's bathing trunks. He used to come home and they'd be marked and splodged with tar and uh, oil from our beaches. Well, he wanted to throw them away, so I said, well, he'd soak them over now from cold water OMO, and the next day they were shimmering white again. Cold water OMO cleans best. Over a million South African housewives have proved it. Lux is the beauty soap chosen by beautiful film stars around the world. They choose Lux for its rich, moisturizing lather. Lux, a beauty treatment as you bathe. Episode one of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel start their investigations into a murder case that has overtones of old-time vaudeville. The case of... Stop me if you've heard this. The two men in the car were Mary Maxie Martin and his partner, Jolly Jenkins. Maxie, round, chubby and smiling, was a happy man. Jolly, morose, thin and miserable. Maxie smiled in anticipation of what lay ahead. He indicated the capital land and development building. Jolly agreed with a languid nod of the head. They left the car, crossed the road and let themselves into the building. In the corridor that led to the conference room, they stopped. Maxie put down the suitcase. Ah, this'll do all right. Quick change. Right. Ta-ta. Ba-boom. Ta-ta. Ba-boom. Ta-ta. 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 Ba-boom. Open up. We're in the wings. Jolly Jenkins opened the case and from it took a battered straw hat, a false shirt front, and a magician's wand. Maxie donned a colored bowler with blonde straw hair attached and placed a clown's red ping-pong ball over his nose. They both changed their shoes. Jolly into a pair of tap shoes, Maxie into the oversized clown's shoes. In a matter of seconds, they were ready. This is it. Come on, we're on. Inside the conference room, Sir Jeremy looked up in surprise, wondering who could be arriving so late. He hardly had time to say, Come in. When the door burst open. And the act began. You've got 
to S-L-I-L-E. Uh, to be double P. Who are you? I say, I say, I say. Would you care to hear what the girl said to the sailor? Well, certainly not. What sort of joke is this? Think, oh. Now, look here. You may think that this is very funny. No, but... not funny, old man. Not funny. I'll tell you what is funny. A man was walking down the street. He met his pal who'd been married for 50 years. He said, here, ever thought of divorce you in your marriage? And the other fellow said, no, only murder. <laughs> <laughs> Here, speaking of murder, this will just kill you. Maxie drew a large, long-barreled pistol from his pocket. He pointed it at Sir Jeremy and fired. Oh. Sir Jeremy, a look of utter bewilderment on his face, clutched at his chest. A red stain appeared on his white shirt, spreading over his fingers as he slowly fell across the desk. The two men hardly gave him a glance, but with a hand on each other's shoulders, they made a typical vaudeville exit from the room. Oh, we're very, very sad that you've had to leave us, but when you've got to go, you've got to go. Another car made its way through the web of streets towards the Capital Land and Development Building. It was Steve's car. He was at the wheel, Mrs. Peel alongside, with a very intricate street map. Where are we now? Um, page 31. Oh, that helps a great deal. Oh, sorry. According to this, we should just have passed over a couple of squiggly lines with a blob at the end. A railway bridge. And dead ahead is a broad band with zigzags. What? That's the Thames. Oh. Well, then we take the first left before that. Right. No, left. I mean, right, oh. left. We sound like a musical act. <laughs> right, I mean. Oh, forget it. It's the one, two, three, four, five on the right. Got to be right this time. How was Sir Jeremy Broadfoot killed? Shot. The boys have moved in, cleaned the place up, left everything for us. Signs of a struggle? Well, not at all. This car may be tricky to handle in a confined area, I meant but... Sir Jeremy. Hmm? Any signs that he's... Left? Taken by surprise. I know, but I realise we should... I meant Sir Jeremy. No sign of a struggle. He was taken by surprise. Or knew the murderer. Now we want... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten... Eleventh on the right. That is... Yes. Then we... We... We are... Oh, dear. Uh, from where I sit, it looks as though you've got the map upside down. It is. Upside down. Well, then we'll just have to go back to the beginning and... Hey, hey, look. The Capital Land and Development Company. Stop! <laughs> but how? Never question the dark mystique of fortuity, Mrs. Beale. Just close the darn map and get out. Let us hasten to the scene of the crime. Some minutes later, Steed and Mrs. Peel were in the conference room, gazing down at the chalk markings on the floor which outlined where Sir Jeremy had slithered off the oak desk. I suppose the whole place has been what the crime writers call thoroughly searched. Uh, thoroughly. Mrs. Peel reached down under the desk and retrieved a magician's wand. She gazed at it reflectively. The results are waiting for us in Sir Jeremy's private office. This way. Oh, right. Uh, Mrs. Peel, aren't you forgetting something? Mm. It's 241 shopping days to Christmas? No? No. Oh! It's your birthday? No. Why have we been called in? Well, that's a good thought. Why have we been called in? Well, this company, the Capital Land Development Company, have just landed the contract. Ah, I see. Um, what contract? Cupid. Cupid? Cupid. Who is he? Uh, what is it? In the event of war, where would the government want to go? Mm, the moon? Ah, no, quite the opposite. Underground. Cupid. C-U-P-I-D. The cabinet underground premises in depth. Are to be built by this company. Oh. So naturally, when one of their directors gets popped off... We are very concerned. Now, let's look at the evidence. Okay. What's exhibit one? A footprint found in the grounds outside. They took a plaster cast, I hope. They did indeed. This is it. Steed indicated a cast of a large clown shoe. Small heel. All foot. There's something written on it. Mm, yes, um, a footnote, as it were. Despite the size of the shoe, the impression depth suggests the person was of normal height. Not a giant? No. Unless, of course, he was a remarkably thin one. A dieting giant? 
Can't be very common. Hmm. What have you got there? Oh, this. Mrs. Peel waved the stick she'd picked up. Oh, the stick. I picked it up in the other room under the desk. It seems to be... At the wave of the wand, it sprouted paper flowers. Oh, a bunch of flowers. For you, Steed, with my love. <laughs> A quick drive away from the Capital Land and Development Company uh, is a variety artist's rest home. It's called Gresham Grange, or more commonly known as Grease Paint Grange. In the main hall is a tiny proscenium arch, and on the small stage is a permanent Punch and Judy theatre. A collection of old-time actors and musicians gathered around it in movable wooden chairs. The show was a late one, but the audience was wrapped in attention. In the front row sat Maxie Martin and Jolly Jenkins. Punch pushed onto the platform a gallows and hammered on the wooden stand. Excellent, excellent, gentlemen. There were no complications? None. Exactly as he says. It went exactly as rehearsed. And you're quite certain you were not seen? Oh, quite certain. Not a soul was about. Just like first out on a Monday. We didn't get an hand. Oh. Gentlemen, ladies, please, please, quiet. I must remind you that Sir Jeremy was only one of the board. Our work must continue. I agree. No resting. Even Matin is on the weekends. A long run. That's what we are after. Our revenge will not be complete until all the directors are gone. Mm. Look at this, gentlemen. This is a portrait of another director of the Capital Land and Development Company. His name is the Honorable Thomas Randolph Cleghorn. <laughs> He is your next victim. Strike. Strike now. Now. He must be killed. Kill. 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 And with a vicious uppercut, Jimmy Anderson finishes trimming his whole hedge in just three hours, 11 minutes. <laughs> Great work, Jimmy. Do you play any other sport? Yes, Domino's. You're looking pretty cool, Jimmy. What deodorant do you use? Shield for sportsmen, of course. Why? It works. Shield for sportsmen deodorant won't stick, sting, or stain. In aerosol or roll-on, it's made to keep sportsmen cool and dry. Think what it can do for you. The cleaning power of cold water Omo gives you the superb cleanness you want from a washing powder. Listen to Mrs. Baxter of Claremont. It really is good, you know. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable, really, that, that it could be so good, you know. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. The Avengers. <laughs> Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omer.